While starting the properties of convolution, I told you there are total 10 properties which we are required to study. We have already completed 8 properties out of 10 and now in this presentation which is part 4, we will discuss the remaining 2 properties, the property number 9 and the property number 10. So let's start with property number 9. The property number 9 is the property of area. According to this property, if there are two signals, let's say x1t and x2t and they are convoluted and the resultant signal is yt. Now the area of the first signal x1t is let's say a1 and the area of second signal x2t is let's say a2 and area of final signal is a. Then a is equal to multiplication of a1 and a2. So this is what we have to remember regarding the area property of convolution operation and to understand this we will take one example. In this example we have the waveform of the first signal and the waveform is like this. This is 2 this is minus 1 and this is 2. The waveform of the first signal x1t and it is convoluted with another signal x2t having the waveform which is different than the rectangular waveform. The waveform is triangular in nature. This is 0 and this is 4. And after convoluting signal x1t and signal x2t we have the resultant signal yt and we are required to calculate the area of the resultant signal yt. So to calculate the area we will first calculate the area of signal x1t it is equal to 3 multiplied by 2 the width is equal to 3 and the height is equal to 2 so area a1 is equal to 3 multiplied by 2 which is equal to 6 and the area of second signal a2 is equal to half base multiplied to the altitude. The altitude is equal to 2 so we will have half multiplied to 4 multiplied to 2 and it is equal to 4. Now we know from the property of area the total area of the resultant signal is equal to the total area of the first signal multiplied to the total area of the second signal. So 6 multiplied to 4 will give us the area of signal yt. So area of signal yta is equal to 6 multiplied by 4 which is equal to 24. So this is all for the ninth property of convolution and if you remember the very first lecture of convolution in which we obtained the convoluted result of two rectangular signals having different widths we got the trapezoidal signal the first signal was having the waveform like this 1 0 1 and the signal was impulse response of the LTI system and the second signal which was the input to the LTI system was having the waveform like this 0 2 1 xt and we performed the convolution between the two signals and we got the resultant signal which was the output of the LTI system having the waveform like this the trapezoidal waveform 1 0 1 2 3 the x axis is the axis of variable t and this is the waveform of output yt which is the output of an LTI system we had detailed discussion on the steps involved in calculating the output of an LTI system when the impulse response and the input is given using the convolution operation so we know the result of the convolution here and I want to cross verify the property of area. So first we will calculate the area 
of the impulse response waveform we are having. So the area A1 is equal to 1 multiplied by 1. So the area of the impulse response waveform is equal to 1. Now we will calculate the area of the input signal waveform. It is equal to 2 multiplied by 1. So it is 2. So A1 multiplied by A2 is equal to 1 multiplied by 2 which is equal to 2. So this trapezoid we are having here should have the area equal to 2 if it is satisfying the property of area. And we know the convolution operation satisfies the property of area so we must get the area equal to 2. So let's calculate the area of this trapezoid quickly. First we will calculate the area of this square. I will represent it A subscript and this symbol here representing the square and the area of a square is equal to 1 multiplied by 1 so it is equal to 1 now we will calculate the area of this triangle here it is equal to half base multiplied to the altitude so it is equal to 0 0.5 the area of this triangle will be same as the area of this triangle so we are having a triangle 2 equal to 0 0.5 we will add all the three areas and finally we will have the total area of the trapezoid which is equal to the area of the output signal waveform 1 plus 0 0.5 plus 0 0.5 which is equal to 2 so you can see our calculation is satisfying the area property of the convolution this means we have performed the convolution without any mistake so this is all for the property of area. Now we will move to the 10th property, which is the property of duration or extension. 10th property, the property of duration or extension. After understanding this property, you can see we can verify this result using this property also. According to this property, if we have one signal x1t and the non-zero value of signal x1t is between this range t less than equal to t2 but greater than equal to t1 and there is another signal x2t having the non-zero value between t4 and t3 and now we are interested in convoluting x1t and x2t and after performing the convolution, let's say we have yt. So the non-zero value of signal yt will be in the range t2 plus t4. t should be less than equal to t2 plus t4. And t should be greater than equal to t1 plus t3. t1 plus t3. So this is all about the duration or extension property of convolution. Now we will verify this property using the result we are having here. You can see the non-zero value range of signal HT is from 0 to 1. This is T1 and this is T2. Signal XT is non-zero between 0 and 2. So this is T3 and T4. So according to the duration or extension property, the resultant signal after performing the convolution should be non-zero between T1 plus T3 that is 0 plus 0 equal to 0 and T2 plus T4 that is 1 plus 2 equal to 3. So you can see it is satisfying the property of duration or extension. So try to practice more problems and if you face any difficulty you may ask in the comment section.